the movie begins with a recap. Remember this shit? Great! Bet you don't remember this title card, though. <laughs> it's a new one. Drip back. A woman named Granny Ruth and her granddaughter Susan watch the news together, where a broadcaster, who may or may not have a plate in her head, reports on the Bradley <laughs> Brothers what? accident. The little guy was Dwayne's <laughs> <laughs> Love the Acacia cab, yeah. <laughs> away. At the hospital, different hair looks the totally different. Have survived both the bandaged up Dwayne and the fantastic looking Belial. Oh wow, my buddy, god. Look at what a little money can do. <laughs> You've become so articulate. Yeah. <laughs> Point Subway. Still not the best talker. His commotion <laughs> is enough to wake Dwayne up. What? And on their way out the hospital, Belial kills a guard by strangling him against the wall. Yeah, give us a close. It looks up better. That beautiful boy. It looks I'm better. Happy for you, B. <laughs> he takes his lumpy brother and dresses up like a wet bandit to escape. And no sooner are they outside than a van pulls up with a granny popping out. What? Him. Ruth tells Dwayne she knew his aunt and wants to help him and Belial. Not having any better options, Dwayne loads up Belial <laughs> and hops into the back. Now punch it, Grandma! Yahoo! <laughs> Dwayne finds himself recovering mm -hmm. in Granny Root's bed, getting blurry glimpses of oh, God. his pals. But he's having a hard time staying awake, so what? Granny Ruth checks in on his brother. If she could only find the little box dweller. She calls out what and is that? says that their aunt once reached out to her for help, since she runs a sanctuary for people like Belial. That kind of inclusive talk okay. gets him to show his pretty face. Ruth tells Belial he can live here as long as he becomes part of their community. And she knows how to sweeten the pot, too. Now I understand you feel comfortable sleeping in a basket. Well, sure. <laughs> who doesn't? Not that has to do with Whoa, a basket! Well, you got yourself a deal! With the terms and conditions agreed upon, it's time for Belial to meet the rest of Granny Ruth's charges. Children. Children. A new member of our community. Okay. She brings up the basket and calls everyone. Oh, forth, and just leaves them up there. First good look at Granny oh, Ruth's with her, okay. unique individuals. There's one named Lorenzo that can sing. Die compi, die <laughs> a lady with a big old fossil head named Elise, a stylish, anxious boy named Frederick. And perhaps most interesting to Belial, a lumpy lady named Eve who's been silent what? since she arrived here a year ago. She seems to be so withdrawn into her own private world. <laughs> yeah, this movie's not one for subtlety. Belial and these sexy eyes gonna fuck. <laughs> the individuals in Granny Ruth's home were designed and created by Gabe Bartalos, an effects artist who was responsible for the leprechaun makeup oh, wow. of all six of the Warwick Davis films. Bartalos and Henenlotter worked together to create a whole host of characters, intentionally avoiding any kind of real-life abnormality. Makes sense. We went out of our way not to have any freak that resembled a human deformity. We made these cartoon freaks. He really stressed to me, let's not make this mean-spirited and let's not bring it too yeah. close to home. Bartalos also had the pleasure of redesigning the aisle with the film's yes. much bigger budget. 1.5 million as opposed to the original's 35,000. Million? He ended up with this awesome Belial animatronic <laughs> which replaces Henenlotter's homemade stop-motion effects. It's great that they had so much money to play around million. with for this film. Even if it did come with some strings attached. <sighs> we had guys in suits standing around telling us we weren't going fast enough. Months later, a reporter named Marcy is assigned to write a story about where the Bradley brothers went. Though nobody knows where they are, her boss suggests she track down Granny Ruth, who they know by a much more derisive name. Dr. Freak. <laughs> Dr. Freak? Mm -hmm. Gave birth to a boy with 11 arms. Yeah, the kid died, yeah. but it made a sort of a missionary for freaks' rights. In her businesswoman Barbie dollhouse, okay. Marcy calls up a dude named Lyle Barker, who runs a classic-style so-called freak show, and in fact claims to have Belial there as his latest addition. She says she's on her way, but before she can get there, Granny Ruth shows up at Barker's door, following his advertisement claiming to have Belial. He takes her out <laughs> to his backyard, where he's got a whole when did he get circus there? tent set up, filled with... I don't remember him leaving of mermaids and aliens. When he gets to Belial's supposed bones, Granny Ruth calls him out as an exploited <laughs> okay. carny. Trash. Okay, no so she knows. Scum. She's just she calling him out. She brings in a basket and leaves oh. it with Mr. Barker. And okay. since he never watched the original film, he unwisely opens its lid. Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Get inside the fish tank is you know, fake mermaid. Oh god. Don't give me none of that, dude. Do you see the graphics on screen? You did. <laughs> has a therapy session with Granny Ruth where she you tells did. him that she understands his identity issues, but that he should maybe consider finding a different way to cope with them. Ripping Ugh, faces. Look at that face. People may not be in your best interest. <laughs> you should probably take her advice, B. Granny Ruth's Staten Island mansion is full of unique individuals, and they all seem to be doing oh, well. Oh, God. Hell, that dude's reading Stephen Hawking. <laughs> bizarre casting fun fact that Crescent Moon dude, oddly named Half Moon, is played by David Emge, who is one of the four leads in Dawn of the Friggin' Dead. <laughs> now, Dwayne talks to Susan and says that he can't really relate to the other individuals. I love all the background he gives on these characters her, and the actors. He's a pretty lady. God, wouldn't that be great? You and I just running away someplace. Susan says, nah, man, they both do belong here. No matter how normal they may appear compared to folks like Mousy or Frederick. You can't forget where you came from, Dwayne. That's true. It's not who I am now. If you say so. Dwayne tells Ruth that he's grateful for her help, but that he doesn't belong here. And I, I don't the understand. Least. He pops into the attic to break the news to Belial and is pointed in the right direction by a dude with 27 noses. <laughs> Yeah, Boyle's just noses. passed the Brainiac in the corner and the Chop Top looks <laughs> at the oxygen bar. He's in his basket next to Eve, lovingly stroking her hand. Because later, them two gonna fuck. <laughs> the Wait, are they actually going to? Gargoyle guy with the whooping laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and into a shed. He says he wants to leave Belial at Granny Roots and run off with Susan to start a new life. But when he declares his love for Susan, Belial responds in the scariest way I've ever seen. <laughs> what, what's, what is going on? Dear God. <laughs> Why does he have an actual Why's face now? Real face all of a sudden? Stop! <laughs> report, found Granny Ruth with the help of a tabloid was that the same actor? Artie, played by Matt Mittler, who was Ed Jr. in everyone's favorite seaside slasher, The Mutilator. Granny Ruth tells Marcy that she's a hack who can kindly fuck off. <laughs> the way out the door, they run into Dwayne. Quick, dude, create a cover before Marcy figures out who you are. <laughs> I got those groceries you wanted. In there? Whew, good job. Oh, God. Man. I think you're safe. Bradley's in there. He's in there. Damn it, Dwayne. Ruth tells Dwayne that when Marcy comes back looking for him, she'll find and expose all the other unique individuals, too. Despite wanting to leave, Dwayne promises to stay and fight for them. I won't leave until you, Susan, and the others are safe. It's acting. And so that night, it was Granny Ruth puts on her best Better or worse in the first movie. Ends up an elevator into the attic, where her congregation of unique individuals are waiting for her words. The wolves are what? once again at our door. Annie Ross gives a great monologue, rallying her troops in a long, unbroken take as the camera, operated by an energetic John Sasenko, moves throughout the crowd. <laughs> our sanctuary has been violated. Monster Mothma here gets everyone excited and fist pumping to fight, including this one yeah. dude who doesn't get the memo when they're done. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. Everyone is. <laughs> Even Frog Boy there, who's played by Frog a guy Boy. named Tom Franco, but I don't know if it's actually the middle brother of Jimmy. <laughs> that Tom Franco would have been nine years old at the time, and yeah. that doesn't seem right. After no, seeing not. Granny Ruth and Susan leave, Marcy sends Artie towards the house, hoping that a picture of the Bradley bros will make for a big story. He sneaks inside and snaps Maybe. a picture of Dwayne, then decides to head into the attic and he's gonna a funny die. shot of Belial. There we Flashing go. lights warning, y'all, because after Artie he gets into the attic, he lights the dark and oh, God. With a camera flash, then uses the strobing light to watch as an army of unique <laughs> individuals approach him, looking like they're raving at a nightclub. <laughs> climb back out of the attic. Just go! Instead, Artie stands frozen in place while Lyle crawls towards him and him up into the attic. Another fellow keeps the strobing lights going oh, my while God. Lyle kills Artie with the usual generic mauling. Just now, that was, that'd be scary. Hand on face rubbing and fake blood. <laughs> Oh, jeez. The ends with Artie's off-screen death, and all the lights in the house go off. Marcy goes to see mm -hmm. Phil, a private investigator played by Ted Sorrell. That's actually kind of scary. Game. 
He's familiar with Granny Ruth, having dealt with her in the past, so he calls up her place and demands to speak to Dwayne. Threatening to bring the police to Granny Ruth's mansion, Phil gets Dwayne to agree to meet with him. Dwayne picks a bar, and Phil arrives in the most film noir way he can manage. <laughs> he Dwayne and says that he wants his brother to file. I don't know why exactly, maybe reward money or something? But he makes a misstep when he tries to appeal to Dwayne's normality. Are you and I considered normal in here? Do we look like we fit in? Of course we do. You sure about <laughs> that, Phil? Because underneath that mask, uh, the bartender's got some nasty face work. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Wait, hold on. Than you. <laughs> and those guys, you need to bring more tissue. <laughs> and Frederick, that mask doesn't even begin to cover your face. Phil takes out a gun <laughs> and tries to leave quietly, but the unique individual back him into a storage room where he stumbles upon the body of a dude with his face ripped apart right, by there we Belial. There oh, God. A bartender? Not sure. Belial attacks Phil and knocks him into the most interesting trash in the world. <laughs> Phil tries to fight back and oh, even gets some shots off. Belial overcomes him in the end, tearing out I like his how the face, face is changing. him through the door to finish off the kill. The unique individuals okay. all hightail it out of the bar and hop into Granny Ruth's van, while Susan learns Marcy's home address from Phil's wallet. Granny and her gang... Away! So they're just all killers Marcy's now. She's fresh out the shower and her flushing up. That's what's happening. When she finds her window broken and her phone line cut. Looks like it was Dwayne who's here with his basket. He wants to grant you an interview. So he's all the way bad. A personal interview. But since she can't interview Air, Marcy flees from <laughs> to look for other subjects. Oh, hey, why not a piece on Frederick Frogboy and Wormface, dude? Marcy finds unique individuals all over her frickin' apartment. <laughs> unique, hanging very out in unique. Her kitchen and climbing through the window. She tries to project strength with the assistance of a kitchen knife, but then Dwayne asks an ancient riddle passed down through his family from the old country. What's in the basket? <laughs> fast to find out. <laughs> Just okay. Belial rides around <laughs> her chest for a while, ripping away at her face as <sighs> an audience of individuals watch it before finishing his work up on the floor. Gee, Marcy, you should see yourself. You're a freak now, too. Yep, just like in Freaks, Marcy is not what? Afraid, but left to be one of them. <laughs> still doesn't get her invited to the cookout. <laughs> really a shame for her. It's the best place to get yourself a free close-up. This one. I think every single unique individual here gets a close-up. I don't really mind, though. <laughs> Might as well show off those effects. Also, <laughs> if you notice the proliferation of Jolt Cola <sighs> all over this movie, it's because Hennemotter drank so much of it on set that they ended up becoming a sponsor of the film. <laughs> no human being should be taking this, and I'm just downing it. This doesn't make any away. sense. Dude needed to stay awake somehow. He and this crew basically shot Basket Case 2 and Frankenhooker at the same time. <laughs> double production like that's gonna require some energy. Oh I have my never God. in my life seen so many fucking cans of Jolt Cola as I did on that set. And I think at a certain point, all of us became addicted to that crap. <laughs> as the others chow down, Susan goes inside to check on Dwayne. Wouldn't want him sitting on beds all weird or anything. Oh God. <laughs> Sitting on beds weird. He's real obsessive like that. Then goes for a kiss oh, only God. to have it telepathically interrupted. But this time, it's not because Belial's angry. It's because him and Eve are finally about to... <laughs> Listen, I warned you all. Don't act like I didn't. In a scene, somehow combines the discomfort of the bride of what? sex scene with the disgust of the shunting from society. Belial <laughs> and Eve make love. Oh. But Dwayne moves in on Susan. I love you, Susan. I love you. Love. Oh man, forget what I said about giving you all a warning. There is no way to prepare you for this. There's no preparing Dwayne for what Susan says next. I've been pregnant for the past six years. What? Yeah, check it out, dude. Oh, God. in her belly. Maybe a cutie. Dwayne doesn't think so and starts freaking out. <laughs> Susan tries to calm him down, he's just too upset. But I mean, you would be too. What? Telepathically linked to this. <laughs> accidentally pushing Susan Oh, no. Causing her to fall through the air and crash the pick. Oh, no. Which also kills the party. Good going. <laughs> the Good going. used to Mama's throne from trains, she's not exactly fond of granddaughters thrown from.
from windows. So she tells the grieving <sighs> individuals to go find Dwayne, who seems to have totally snapped by now. <laughs> I don't know how to make things right. What? The plan to make things right begins with a bat to Belial's <laughs> As the individuals form a very ineffective search. <laughs> You have to look, you know, not just panic. <laughs> carries his unconscious brother into the nursery. On his side. Separately, they're only half a person each. So how's about they become whole again? Oh, God. Oh, screen, no. Queen uses a knitting needle, not a sewing needle. <laughs> not long in the idle hand scale pad, to stitch Belial back to his side in another blood spurty oh, procedure. Oh, one God. that gives plenty of dolls blood stashes and blood abroad. <laughs> Ruth finds them and screams. And the blood movie stashes. Ends, him telling her, that it's gonna be all right. We're together again. How many individuals were murdered <laughs> weekly? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Th this one looks insane. Like the first one, I would watch the first one just because of its. Six people died in basket. Cult craziness. Five of them were due Less to people than the first the movie. Only lady since they left Marcy alive but disfigured doesn't count. That's right. With a runtime of 90 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 15 minutes even. Okay. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Phil. None of these kills were all timers or anything. No. But the makeup on his missing lips is kind of cool. Doll machete for lamest kill could be any of them, really. <laughs> uh, let's just say that first one. Any no, of them. It's just a neck break, mostly off screen. And that's yeah, it. That's Basket true. Case 2 came out in 1990 and had the biggest oh, box God. office opening of any Hen and Lauder project ever. He would immediately make a third film the following year, and I'll look at that next week. Until then, I'm James A. We're going to watch that one. This has been the kill count. I feel like the first one was, it was funny because of its badness. This one was trying to actually be somewhat of a good movie and it lost some of that spark that the first movie had, I think. Just to me, to me. Uh, the, uh, in the weirdness, in the creepiness of the film, the whole thing's creepy and nasty and weird. But this one, <clears throat> it's like it's trying to do something. It's trying to be something that it's not. And that's probably the issue I have. Because it wasn't really that interesting. The story was weird. You have all these characters for no reason. I mean, they try to make it a reason, but it's like, it's just weird. And it wasn't as funny as the first one, based on what he did with the video. He makes it funny, James, uh, he just no matter what. But uh, th <laughs> this was a, uh, this one was a little bit weird. Now, obviously the sex scene between Belial and, and the other girl or whatever is d disgusting. I thought he was just messing around like, oh yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna do it. I thought he was messing around. The fact that it actually happens and they, somebody filmed this. Somebody took the time to write this out, and then a crew, <laughs> a, co a, a complete crew of, of people came together and shot that scene of them, them doing it. <clears throat> that's cinema. That, that, that's kind of all we can say there, it's cinema. Uh, it's, <laughs> what, what more is there to say in this scenario? My God, oh my God. Uh, you know, I, I just appreciate that you guys watched that with me because I, I, I couldn't watch this on my own. I need, I need you guys for videos like this because uh, <laughs> it's just it's just disgusting. It's just gross. And, and, and it, it's not very funny funny, but it's funny for like all the wrong reasons. Oh, okay. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. <laughs> oh, that, that was, that was a little rough.